In this video on Google Sheets, I'm going to show you how to format your data, your numbers, into different formats, how to protect ranges of data, which means prevent them from being edited by anyone else, and how to use the Quick Sum feature. Let's get started. So, I have the tab open here. I have my Amazon cart, and I have all the different things that I want to buy in there, and I have them hyperlinked. You'll also notice that I have some sum features, and I have some totals on there. One thing that's a problem, though, is right now the numbers, they're not really formatted as currency. It's kind of confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my range of data, then I'm going to go to Format, Number, and then I want to change that to Currency. When I have it formatted as Currency, it's going to put a dollar sign in front of that there. So now I've changed that, and you can see it's got this particular column and a couple other columns that do some calculations. They're formatted a lot more cleanly than I would have something else if it was just a pure number. Now, I could also do the same thing by clicking right here where it says Format as Currency. So here I'm just going to click the button and it's going to accomplish the same feature. I could also format it as percentage, but that'd be just a little confusing. Now, I also have the ability to increase or decrease decimal points. And you can see by just clicking this button here, I'm going to be moving the decimal point to the left. In this case, I've moved it where it was, 9.88. So now it's moved it to the left and it's rounded the number accordingly. I could also go, and you can see right here, I can't go any further. I could also move the decimal point to the right and keep on going there if you have like fractions of a cent or whatnot here, but I'm just going to move it as necessary. It makes it cleanest. Next thing though is I have this tax rate. All these cells are equal to this one here. Tax rate is really a percentage. What I want to do now is I want to format that as a percentage. So when I click on that, it changes it to 5.50%. All these different cells here are going to follow equal to that. I could also increase or decrease that decimal as necessary, and you can see just moving it to 5.5%. One thing to be aware of, if you just tried to enter the number 5.5 and then go to Format and change that to a percentage, you're going to notice that's going to change it to 550%. Obviously, that's not what you were trying to get to with that. So what you want to make sure you do is you wanted that to be 0 0.055. When you format it as a percentage, it's essentially going to move the decimal point two to the left. Something to keep in mind, I can move that decimal point as necessary. Just bear in mind that. Let's take a look at some of the other formatting options. So now I moved on to the text formatting tab. And I have a couple different things up here. I have some scientific constants, maybe you're familiar with, with some of your uh, previous courses. This first one here, Avogadro's number, a very, very, very long number. You obviously don't want to have to type that one out every time. One of the options you have is to go up to format, number, and now I have to change it to scientific notation. This is just an easy way of condensing all your decimal points so you don't have to deal with all those different zeros. So when I change that, it's now changed it to the more familiar number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, but it writes it as 6.02e positive 23. I have to do that again, and I could, by the way, move that decimal point as necessary either direction as I want. I haven't lost any of the numbers. It just condenses them to make it easier to view. I can go down here to the gravitational constant, a very, very small number, so that's 0 .00000. But when I change that to format number scientific, you're going to see it's now changed it to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, or E negative 11. A lot easier to see, a lot easier to work with, rather than having to have that really long number. Speed of light in a vacuum. 3 times 10 to the 8th, rounded out. Planck's constant. This one was a pain to even type out. It's 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th. That's an incredibly small number. Essentially, the computer would round it down to zero if it had the chance, but sometimes you need that number. So if I went to format, number, and scientific, boy, that's a lot easier to read. 6.63e negative 34. Way, way easier to look at, way easier to work with on your end. Computer still treats it the same way. Here I have a budget one. So I have, here's what my budget was, $400. Here's what I actually spent on it, a lot more. And you can see I'm negative $552, or I'm kind of in the red that far here. Now we could also do a couple financial calculations. So here you can see I'm going to select these, and I'm going to go to Format, Number, and financial. Sometimes in financial circles they're going to use parentheses when they really mean negatives. So that's just another way to take the same number and just have it appear differently as convention dictates. Down here I'm going to show you with duration. Here I have the length of each one of the Star Wars movies. Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace, in addition to being terrible, was 2 hours and 16 minutes long. 
and I have at the bottom kind of a sum, a total of all those. Now what I want to do is I want to change these numbers here into a duration. So I've selected them and I go to format, number, and I have duration, where now it's going to appear hours, minutes, seconds, and you could also include milliseconds and whatnot as necessary. But when I select duration, it's going to change it to two hours, 16 minutes, and zero seconds. Of course, I didn't have the seconds on there, but I could do that if I was so inclined. One thing to be aware of, if you ever format a decimal as a duration, it doesn't convert the way you might think. Here I have the numbers one, one half, and one quarter. So watch what happens when I select the number one, and I go to format, number, duration. It's going to convert it to 24 hours. So it's essentially going to take all these things and convert them into hours with one day equaling 24 hours. Now if I have the number 0.5 and I format that as a duration, it's going to treat that as 12 hours. 0.25 is going to treat that as a quarter of a day or six hours. Just something to be aware of if you're ever formatting your numbers into a duration. Now, if all those things that I covered doesn't cover something that you're looking for, chances are pretty good that it's still there. If you went to Format, Number, and then you went down to More Formats, you've got lots of different options for all these different kinds of currencies. You've got lots of options for all different date and time, and you could even put your own custom symbol in between there. So you could have the month, question mark, and then a day if you want, or you could even go they have more custom number formats, so you can do pretty much anything you want. Those are a little bit more complicated than we have time for, but worth digging into if you didn't find what you were looking for. Now let's take a look at some other things that I could do with Google Sheets. So let's say I have my nice little Amazon cart here, and I want to share this with my wife, because obviously she earns all the money, but I don't want her to actually change any of that stuff. Here's all the stuff that I wanted from Amazon. I don't want her to change that. I want all these Legos. So what I've done is I've selected my entire Amazon cart, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Data, Protected Sheets and Ranges. What I'm gonna do is I could either protect just the sheet, or I could protect a certain range. Here, I want her to be able to edit the sheet, but not this particular range. So I'm gonna go to Range, and I already have it selected right there but I will let her edit anything that's not in there, and I go to Set Permissions. When I do that, it's going to pop up all these different options here. First thing, I'm, and I could select who I want down there, any additional people. I want to go to Custom, and I want to change it so only I, the owner of this sheet, can actually make any changes to it. When I click on Done, it's going to say Changes Saved. Let me show you what that's going to look like from a different view. So here's what she would see on her different account here. So anything that's in basic white right here could be changed, but you'll notice I have all these different diagonal lines right there. Now, this of course could be edited. You can type anything in that open area here, but if you try to type anything up into there or you try to change those numbers, it won't allow you. It says you're trying to edit a protected cell. You have to talk to the person to remove that protection. So that cannot be changed. However, all these diagonal lines right there, you don't necessarily have to see them. If you go to View, you have the option to make those removed. They're still there, it's still protected, but now you can just kind of see what you have the ability to edit and what you don't. So let's go back to my original account here. I have the ability to change permissions. So I'm gonna change it from a restriction to just a warning. Now it's gonna put up a warning for anyone editing that range. That includes you. Even the owner will be warned. Anyone who's going to will be warned. So I'm going to do show a warning when editing this range and done. And when I go back and I switch to the other account, here's what's going to happen. I'm now in my other account here. If you try to change that, and you could still do it, you have the option to change that. But this one is protected with a warning. If you try to change that to zero, it's going to say, heads up, you're trying to edit part of the sheet that shouldn't be changed. Do you still want to? And you have the ability to say, yeah. I still want to. So you have the ability to edit it, but there's now a warning every time. But I could do this thing right here that says don't show this again for five minutes. So you could go through here and make any changes to the Amazon cart that you wanted. And that warning won't appear for five minutes. Now going back to my original account here, also have the ability, if I want, I can just completely remove that as necessary. So now I'm going to remove all that protected range. I could put a name in there if I wanted, but now I'm just going to remove it. All right, so I'm going to close that down now, and I'm going to show you one last feature. Down here, you'll notice where I'm circling, this is blank. But if I select multiple sets of data, it's no longer going to give me 
a blank string down there. Now it's going to give me a sum of all that. It's going to add those together. You don't need to do anything manually. That's why they call it quick sum. If I was to do it right here, it's going to do the sum there. It's going to give me there's 10 total. Here it's going to give me the amount per unit. Now if I was to do tax rate, that doesn't make any sense to give me a sum. In that case, what I'd want to do is I have other options. I could do average, minimum, maximum. Here I'm going to change that to count. So it's going to say I have eight cells counted. Here I have a count of eight cells as well. There's only eight things in there with a natural thing. I could also do average if I wanted. Here's my average tax. Here's my average price. I could change that to what's the minimum in there? What's the minimum in that particular range? What's the minimum there? Also have the ability I could do maximum. What's the maximum for each one of those? So that's all in the quick sum feature, which is buried down there, and you have a lot of different options. Now for some of them, which don't have numbers, like this range has no numbers, it's just in a default to count. So you don't have to use that data, but it's nice that they provide it.